Did you know that there are two different types of data? Depending on your goal, you will need to decide which type of data will best serve you. There are a lot of differences between quantitative and qualitative data, but when you combine the two, they both encompass the complex world of research. Today, we will be looking at both types of data, exploring their uses, and determining which one you need and when. I'm Alex here with JotForm. Let's jump right in. First, we have quantitative data. This type of data is structured, statistical, and well-suited for data analysis. It is measured solely in numbers and values. You can get this type of data through tests, experiments, surveys, market reports, and metrics. It is good for answering closed-ended questions like how many or how much. Here are some instances where quantitative data is helpful. Quantitative data can provide you with numbers for statistical analysis. This can be used to validate or disprove your hypothesis. You will know if the problem is real, along with findings you can present. And if your results are not what you expected, you will still have a solid foundation for further qualitative research. You can use quantitative data to conduct general surveys. Quantitative research is pretty straightforward since it's much easier to conduct a multiple choice survey or something similar rather than hosting focus groups or conducting a series of interviews. If you are looking for uncomplicated answers to broad questions, then focus on quantitative data. You can also use quantitative data when dealing with discrete data. Some examples of discrete data include the amount of traffic to your website last week, the amount you made in sales last month, or the salary you earned last year. This data is finite and can't be reduced into smaller parts. And finally, it's good for working with continuous data. Continuous data includes things like the speed of your commute in the morning, how long it takes you to read a book, or your weight. This type of data fluctuates and can be reduced into smaller parts, but still relies on numbers and facts. So, how do you get quantitative data? Getting this type of data consistently means that you need to ask the right questions and track all responses you receive. So, for example, you will want to avoid open-ended questions when surveying customers about a new product. Instead, ask them yes or no questions or questions that can be answered by selecting responses from a list. A question like, what did you think of our product, will probably result in many similar answers along with some wild cards that will be hard to quantify. Instead, asking a question like, did our product meet your expectations, will be a much more useful. This question warrants a simple yes or no response. When it comes to collecting more accurate and trusted data, quantitative is a good place to start. Now, let's look at qualitative data. This type of data will not get you hard numbers that can be graphed and charted, but you can use this data to determine why a customer would or would not buy your product. It can be used to categorize responses based on broader properties and attributes. To get qualitative data, you would ask open-ended questions that result in further interpretations. This data is much more descriptive. Here are some ways that qualitative data can be helpful to you. You can use it to form a hypothesis. You can get detailed information on a topic with qualitative data so that you can build a strong hypothesis. This research may show you problems or opportunities then you can move forward collecting quantitative data to help prove your findings. Qualitative data is also useful for incorporating personal elements. You can use qualitative data in the final stages of your project. You can share quotes and personal beliefs that you have obtained through qualitative research. This can provide valuable insight into the quantitative data that you have collected. There are several ways that you can obtain relevant qualitative data. Remember that it's a good idea to pair these approaches with quantitative data for a more well-rounded comprehensive analysis. You can utilize interviews as they give you further insight into your hypothesis with a one-on-one -on -one approach. Case studies go deeper and provide stories from consumers and clients. Focus groups are similar to interviews, but they let multiple people express their views and opinions on a product or topic. You could also go with open-ended survey questions as they allow respondents to express themselves freely and anonymously. Lastly, you could also use observational research. This is good for understanding how people operate in their regular routines and interactions. Okay, let's review. 
quantitative data is structured and is measured in numbers and values. Quantitative data is best used for validating your hypothesis, conducting general surveys, dealing with discrete data, and continuous data. Qualitative data is less structured and focuses more on descriptive answers from participants. Qualitative data can be used when forming your hypothesis and incorporating personal elements into your research. Although both types of data are different, combining quantitative and qualitative research will get you the best results since you will be utilizing both hard numbers and personal experiences. Thank you for watching today. I hope this video was helpful. I'm Alex here with Jotform. Have a good one.